<laughs> and I remember of recovery guys, and, and uh, just really excited to be able to talk about what one second. You guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're yeah, hold on. Hold on. I'll explain this in just a bit. This episode of the Bill and Callie show is brought to you by Tiger Plumbing. Whether you need to replace a faucet, overhaul your sump pump, or de-sludge your drains, call Tiger Plumbing. In today's world, knowing who's at your door is important. Tiger Plumbing sends you your technician's photo, estimated time of arrival, and a little bit about him or her. Hey, Sam likes fishing and camping. Cool. There we go. Welcome to Neighbors, the uh, special show put on by the Bill and Kelly Show. I apologize, I forgot to hit the stream button, folks. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kelly knows. Yeah, she, she's yeah, it happens every day. He forgets to hit something. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to our show. Uh, with us today, we have uh, two guests from the Porter County area and uh, actually specifically Portage. So I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves, uh, starting with Nicole. Hi, how are you both doing? Great. Hi, my name is uh, Nicole, and uh, I am um, currently homebound with everybody else, working from home, and I'm also a volunteer board member for the Portage Recovery Association. We are a um, nonprofit organization that provides space for 12-step groups to meet, and a sober environment for people that are in recovery to um, fellowship and have a safe place to go. Yeah, and uh, my name is Jake, and I'm also a member of the Board of Recovery Association uh, Board of Directors. Uh, just an absolute pleasure. Every time I see Bill and Callie, I have a smile on my face, and I couldn't be any happier to be here with them today. And uh, I'm also a member of Recovery 12-Step Organization. Well, you're one of the few people that has a smile when they see me. Now, Kelly, I can understand, but usually people get a disgusted look on their face, especially Kelly. Aw, quite the opposite with us. Well, boy, boy I, I'm really happy. This is our second show that we've done. Uh, so thank you, too, for uh, coming online yes. and, and sharing. And the whole premise is, is just connecting. And now this is unusual since you guys are already connecting. But what, what I thought we'd use this opportunity to tell a little bit about what you guys do, um, some uh, information about Portage uh, Recovery Association, plus what impact this whole uh, COVID-19 outbreak has had on you, specifically now that the governor has made it official. He it, Before it was just a recommendation, now he has uh, issued an executive order uh, stay-at-home order, so which now makes it law. Um, so for, let's back up and ask, what do you all do? You know, specifically, when to give us some history about uh, for those who are just tuning in and uh, don't know about Portage Recovery Association. Yeah. Um, so uh, Portage Recovery Association is a uh, facility right around McCaslin Avenue uh, by the. Uh, um, toll road exit off of Willow Creek. And uh, what we do is we house 12 step fellowships. They can come in and have uh, uh, meeting spaces. They rent a facility for meetings uh, to, uh, it, it's more like a self educated uh, uh, support groups, not their exact term I'm looking for, but it's people that are afflicted with alcoholism addiction can come there and uh, seek help for recovery you know and, and anybody that walks in those doors we offer the opportunity of uh, some experience strength and hope for members that are already there and uh you know we, we just want to be the hand that reaches out for anybody who's afflicted with alcoholism or addiction it doesn't have to be necessarily the alcoholic or the addict uh it can be a family member of those persons also and uh you know we we feel uh, something that I've, I've told before is that we're the safest place in portage i feel you know we have there's no weapons. There's no violence. Um, we're there. Everybody's in a good mood. We're a happy environment. Uh, we have activities for the ourselves and for the public that we put on. Um, you know, uh, anniversary parties, food get-togethers. We get together and watch the games. 
Uh, we've had community events for the public before. So, you know, we're just a bunch of people that are in recovery, hanging out, celebrating the fact that we ain't picking up anymore. And life is good. It's a little different right now. And Nicole can go more into that, I'm sure. I don't know if I could add anything to what Jake said. I just, I just know that um, I, I joined the board about, what, two years ago, Jake? Yeah, two years ago, at, or I, I got involved with the club, uh, with the place about two years ago and then joined the board probably about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Really enjoy it. We, um, I'm sorry about my dog there. We, no, don't worry. <laughs> oh, wait till you hear hard. Dexter. You think? <laughs> we're working hard to oh, make sure that... Uh, PRA is known throughout Northwest Indiana. We uh, every quarterly would like to host uh, community events. Our next one, uh, our hope is in May, May 9th, right, Jake? Is okay. to have one for Mental Health and Substance Abuse okay. Month, where uh, Angela, who had just participated, who had just was on your show recently, mm -hmm. she's actually going to provide Narcan training and share her story about uh, personal experience dealing with suicide. We have a lady that's going to speak on behalf of um, uh, her dual diagnosis, and she has a lot of experience doing mental health advocacy in the film festivals in Indianapolis. Oh, cool. Yeah, so uh, we have a couple things in mind, speakers, you know, silent auction, kind of like what we did when you guys participated in our September 14th event for National Recovery Month. Oh, uh, yeah. Nachton, will there be a poppy thing there? I hope so. <laughs> I have all the time in the world to start recruiting for that. And so, uh, yeah, so we're, we're excited. And our, our goal is um, to ensure our doors remain open and that we are able to cover our expenses a year in advance. We're working hard to do that. Yeah, we, yeah, we definitely hear you. And, and that's one thing that, um, you know, now that you, uh, why don't you explain a little bit about what you're doing in lieu of the meetings? Because now that, Obviously, with the order, you're you're doing things virtually, right? Yes, uh, Portage Recovery has provided a space for all the twelve step groups to meet, and so there's uh, they have meetings uh, at eight thirty in the morning, noon, uh, ten o'clock every night, seven nights a week, eight o'clock seven nights a week, and it's we've uh, we're seeing and hearing that a lot of appreciation across the region from people. We have people that are from Illinois. Uh, where else, Jake? I think uh, even Texas, uh, people that are participating around the country, wow. word spreading. They're so excited because uh, it's different because we are a group, a community. A lot of people are, uh, we come from a community where we hug. You know, we we uh, hold hands when it comes to, you know, saying like doing, having certain traditions that we do. And it's, uh, it's, it's a lot different for a lot of us to be able to not, you know, to have that interaction. So we provide that face-to-face -face opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because every single, every single day right now, all I, all I ever hear from people is I'm so grateful you have this. This has been so nice. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, you know, we, when this whole pandemic started, you know, we had a, a group discussion with our board members and, and we said, what's the what's the right play here? What, what do you guys suggest? And we, we talked about it. We made some necessary adjustments for the start, eliminated our coffee area, you know, extra sanitizer, uh, cleaning down the tables and chairs, uh, you know, making sure the facility was kept clean. And, and we noticed over a few day period that the members uh, decided that they wanted to start staying home just to be extra precautious. And we understood that. So Nicole and another member of recovery they really got ahead of things and uh, set up uh, an account on Zoom, and uh, it, it was so, uh, you know, she got a hold of me and she said, let's try this online thing, and we jumped in, and it was real special right off the bat, and uh, I would say uh, we've been going for six days, I think, mm -hmm. with Zoom so far, and uh, I think it's easily to say that we've had well over a thousand walk-ins in yeah. the six days, and it, what's really cool, like Nicole mentioned, is that we're getting to see some friends right now from outside of the area that we haven't seen in a while. I know my friend from Arizona has been jumping on with meetings. A uh, lady from Arkansas, Texas, as Nicole said, Illinois. Uh, and we're, we're meeting new people also, which is really cool. The people from Chicago are joining our meetings and Maryville and all over the entire area. But to, to see the joy in people's faces and the way that we're connecting with not only uh, new people, but people we haven't seen in years that have moved away for jobs or retirement. And, 
it's just yeah. so cool because uh, the gratitude is so strong right now. And even though a lot of us are homebound, uh, the smiles are there, the faith is there, and it's just really, really special right now. And it's something that I'm hoping that uh, if we, when we get through on the other side, this is going to be a story for a lot of us members to tell the newcomers. Yeah. And uh, that's what it's really about is when the new people come in. So it's super special. Yeah. So, so in a way, I mean, I've always talked about this is that the community that you guys have is we can all learn from uh, for those who, you know, have not had to go through recovery, just the tight knit, the brotherhood, the sisterhood that you guys share is just something to witness. You, it's amazing. Now that with this virtualization of your meetings, it expands. You have different people coming in to, to appreciate all this love and support you guys offer, uh, which I is just absolutely amazing. You know, it's unfortunate we're having to do this, but on the flip side of the coin, look at what you've expanded your um, your region now, so to speak. And do you do you envision maybe um, continuing this maybe after things calm down? Oh, Jake is laughing. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely... The fun thing about uh, the Portage Recovery Association is that we work as a team. Uh, you know, we mm. have a 14-person board, and everybody has an equal voice, and that's the way we like to keep it. I, I've always been taught no one head-to-head, uh, toe-to-toe, no one above, no one below. My voice is just as equal as Nicole's or anybody else's is on that board. So we're open-minded. We, we like to listen to our members. So if yeah. there's immune for it, I don't see a reason why we potentially wouldn't uh, go forward with it, but I don't want to be mistaken because the, the thick of our uh, fellowship is when that new person walks in. Right. And to be able to welcome them with a handshake and a cup of coffee. So there's always going to be a place for Porters Recovery Association and, and what we offer and what other clubhouses like us offer. Um, but we've also had uh, a couple members feedback, a gentleman, single father, uh, almost 30 years in recovery, uh, works uh, odd shifts, and he said, man, I, I've never been able to hit so many meetings in my life because of this platform, and he couldn't be more grateful, you know, because by the time he gets the kids to bed mm-hmm. and has dinner, all the meetings are already over, and here mm-hmm. he is able to jump on with us and be a part of, and he said yeah. I would, he would be more than happy to continue on with this because it means so much to him, and that's the stuff that we're looking for is that feedback from our people because, you know, they drive us. You know what I right. mean? But, yeah, but there'll always be a place for that hand-to-hand stuff because uh, that's definitely much needed. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? We're running out of time. Talk on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, you're probably familiar with this, right? You, you, you we're running in our time limit. Uh, before we have to... Um, oh, we've got nine time remaining meeting time. Nine minutes. Okay. All right. Or I can upgrade. Uh, yes. Technology, right? Um, a million dollars. <laughs> uh, that'd be great. Um, so let's see, where were we? So now, you obviously, you, you know, like you said, the, it's important to be there when that guy walks in through the door. So yeah, I'm, I wouldn't suggest replacing, but boy, this may be something to just add to the schedule, virtual meeting on certain dates. And that way you expand your community, which is, you know, and you get all those people out there that don't have a place like uh, PRA out in Chicago or, and that's it. Are you finding people out there that don't have this type of resource available to them? I think just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just the knowledge of it. I mean, thank God for social media. We have a lot of closed groups that we're a part of. Uh, So... I think a lot of us actually use messenger and create some group chats in there. So the, the younger community in recovery, they take advantage of, of, you know, some of the face to face or the electronics more so than the older community, the older community. uh, Jake was even saying, I think you were working with an 80 year old today to he's working with an 80 year old today to try to help them with the phone and, I guess the person didn't even remember him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, it, it was like I was speaking Chinese to him when I was trying to explain what was going on. But by the end of the conversation, he, I think he got the point of where I was trying to go. But yeah, that's definitely something I worked on. Uh, and Nicole, I know, has been so diligent too. What, what we're hearing is, yeah, a lot of people from um, on other areas, like I said, Maryville, uh, 
Whiting, uh, over on the east uh, of the west side of Indiana, uh, Lake County area. I, I said I really commend Nicole because she was she saw the vision. Mm-hmm. Her and another member saw the vision and jumped out ahead of the curve, and and got this prepared because they saw what was going to happen. And and I don't know where we would be without those two visionaries, you know, getting ahead. But there's yes, there's a lot of people that have told me. I've sat in a bunch of them, and they said. Man, I didn't even know these were out here. Holy cow, our, our groups aren't doing this. Thank you, so they're saying thank you over and over and over and over. And, I, and I'm grateful to hear that, but it's, we're just doing our part. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah I mean, with individuals that want to help the next person, yeah. and that's what we're about. Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, it, it was an organization formed by people in recovery for people in recovery, mm-hmm. and that's what is so blessed about this organization, and we love so much. Um, you, you just get that feeling when you walk in your door that you're there for to you know to support anyone that walks in through the front door, um, and he, it's and it's on the levels because that's something else that that amazed me is that it's just not substance but it's also eating disorders or um, have you guys done anything with gambling? You don't have a group that meets about gambling, right? No, nothing yet, but that's a great population that we should actually reach out to i'm going to form a group and kelly knows this people that hate that gambling addiction uh psa that they run right now i i he doesn't like the commercial yeah fire stick so i don't even know uh that you're lucky (laughs) (laughs) well all this month has been uh gambling addiction month and so they've been playing this psa uh, ad nauseum but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, but you know, there are people. I mean, there are, that that is just a, as valid as an addiction as any other um, addiction. So, but yeah, it, what's real interesting is that there's, I believe, the last time I heard was there's around 150 different 12 step fellowships derived all from the mother of it all. Right. And uh, there's been uh, conversation and talk of, hey, is there one for nicotine? Is there one for gamblers, uh, eating disorders, alcoholism, addiction, sex? I mean, it just goes down the line over and over and over and over and over. And it's been brought up so many times. And, hey, hey, are you guys doing this? Well, if there's a demand for it, well, we're always willing to, you know, play. Yeah. 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 Well, boy, oh, boy. Is there anything else? Oh, uh, Nicole, you're going to share the uh, schedule, right? Yes, we have a schedule that's available. Uh, It's. It's, uh, Jake, it's all pretty much open, correct? Yeah, I think they're all open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all open. So this is our um, schedule for um, for, uh, our Zoom meetings, if you can see that. So I have it set up. And if you have any questions, you can email us at portagerecoveryassociation.com. I have the contact information. So they can uh, uh, download Zoom and then... I said no need to set up an account, but you do have to set up an account. It's free. And then enter one of these meeting IDs right here in the categories. So it's all organized. And then one of the other things, too, that we always like to encourage is, is please, you know, follow our Facebook page. Uh, we have all social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. We have our own web page, portagerecovery.com. Um, we even have a Google business page. I'm a little obsessive. But uh, if... <laughs> If anything, just because I know we're limited on time, if you don't mind if I just throw this out there, we have two major fundraisers that we'd really like to, we have a GoFundMe account where our goal is to, because none of us know what's happening right now and how long this will last. Our goal is to raise enough money to cover two months worth of our utility expenses. And uh, so that's one, our GoFundMe. And then it's called, I think it's called Portage Utility Fund on GoFundMe. And then uh, the other one is, we have a memory wall and where we sell bricks and it's $50 per brick. And this wall will follow us wherever we go if we if we end up moving. But we love our landlords. I don't see us moving anytime soon. Yeah, Chuck's awesome. a great guy. <laughs> Chuck Shields, rent yeah. from him. <laughs> so he's amazing. But uh, we have this brick wall and so it's $50 per brick and we'll have like an engraved uh, thing on there. And it's it's really neat because you can actually memorialize uh, people that have passed or people that are, are still here. I purchased two, one for a friend of mine who passed away uh, when I was two years, so three years sober. She died in the same home that we lived in, and we sobered up at the same time together. And then another one was a friend of, of a group of us ladies who uh, passed away 
she just slipped on the ice and she didn't make it through her surgery. So, um, yeah. So and I did one for my sister who, who passed. Yes. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything unless you wanted to say oh, something. Oh, no, no, but, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity. So if they're interested, we have PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. I mean, there is, we have every option for you to, if you want to connect with us and to be able to, to support one of our fundraisers. Yeah. That's really cool. Like you see, uh, you know, once we started, uh, the fundraiser after we shut down, we kind of just, uh, step back and, uh, what's really neat is that members of my family see the impact that this facility has had on my life and sent money from out of the area to help support this. And it, my favorite aunt, aunt, I love you, Aunt Louise, she sent money from out of the area just because all I did was ask, hey, can you help us out? This is our situation. And my sister and the members, uh, and like Nicole mentioned, uh, our landlord, he's been so supportive during this whole thing with the conversation. and. And then he said, Hey, when this thing blows over, we're going to, we're going to have a conversation and we'll see what's best for not only us, but for him, Yeah. which I think is so fair. He did, he's willing to talk, which is so awesome because the bills will add up here. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. The, uh, NIPSCO and either. Yeah. Which I think they're hopefully will have this, uh, relief package through. They're supposed to vote on it today. Uh, but then once they vote on it, who knows how long it's going to take to get in the hands of organizations and and uh, uh, individuals. So uh, we can only hope for the best. Um, well, listen, that's it. <laughs> we're going to have to quickly end the, the show here. We're out of time or Zoom's going to kick us off. Thank you very much, you two. We love you guys. Thank we you love guys. what love you, you do. You. Kelly, you like just give them a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys take it easy. You too. Thanks. Bye, guys.